Uh, this is Sheila with Conscious Conversation Central, and I'm with Danny, and we did it again. We started, I always do this. I'll get the hang of not doing this. Started well, talking. we were just trying to say hello, and it blows up. Yes. Well, that's, that's the way it feels like for me anymore. Um, when I do speak to, to folks, because right now I'm not talking to much of anyone, so... Thank you for coming and talking to me. <laughs> Thanks for having me. <laughs> um, we were talking about, I, because I said I've been spending a lot of time by myself, a lot of time, introspection, you know, and you said you had too. Yeah. Yeah, I did. Been uh, just taking some time to identify where where most of the irritations in my life seem to be coming from, or if I could localize a spot like that. And uh, the reason that I do that is because I've, I've figured out along my journey that peace is the absence of irritation. It, it's not something physical. You can't grab a jar of peace, open it up and chug it down and feel better. And, and so in defining peace in a new way as the absence of irritation, uh, when I feel irritations in my life, the way I reclaim my power is by how do I address this particular irritation? And the, the types of irritations that I identified coming in uh, were through a particular uh, commitment that I had, just a social commitment throughout the week. And the, the irritations were of such a nature that I would have had to ask for changes from quite a bunch of different people in order to feel better about continuing in this commitment. And I just decided, you know what? This is about me knowing myself and seeing where people are along their journey and, and knowing that... Uh, you know, it's okay for them to be exactly where they are. It's okay for them to behave exactly the way they're behaving. And, and they really don't have the, the raw resources I see right now to make a change on the fly in the moment. And for me to request that of them or have any expectations of, of that would just bring in more irritations and extend the insanity. So, uh, so what I did is I just resigned from, from this particular commitment. Uh, I reclaimed uh, a day. Uh, I saved the, the relationships that I had because, because now I'm outside of having these expectations on my behavior. Um, and so, so it seems like a win-win, but it was a really tough, uh, wow, a week-long session of introspection and and really really figuring out okay what is the actual source of the irritations because really it wasn't their behavior it, it was really the expectations that that were on me of my behavior within this environment so uh, this was just a polite way of saying no while still allowing everybody to be where they are along their journeys and, yeah. and so that's, that's just kind of the, the real <laughs> uh, blurry way just to leave out all the specific details. But, you know, there should be enough pattern in there. That oh, yeah, no, that's, I, I, that's beautiful, actually. It's beautiful that you, that you were able to recognize that and go through that, you know, go through that introspection and, <clears throat> and, and, and just remove yourself in that way. That's great. That's honoring that I view that as honoring yourself, first of all. Hmm. Well, and there's, it's always most important to honor yourself. And, and the way I did it was by just establishing a personal boundary with myself that, okay, this isn't the type of energetic dynamics that, that I'm going to connect with and, and give my energy to. And <clears throat> hmm. well, 
Well, I, I guess it's, it's an exercise in self-knowing and it's an exercise in, in self-allowance uh, just to, to allow myself to make this decision. Um, it was interesting because a, a day later, uh, another person in this group uh, expressed similar thoughts that, that they were having about, about hmm, resigning from this particular commitment as well. Um, I, I kind of drew a blank there. I, I forgot how I was going to connect that back into, into your comment. Um, well, <clears throat> you and I have talked about self-allowance. You know, when we talked last time after, well, I don't know, have we? I remember what I was going to say. The, the big tidbit here was I allowed myself to look in and identify what was happening in my experience and where, what changes I could make. And I'm able now to explain it in words, but there were times in my life where I've withdrawn my energy from certain experiences or commitments where I didn't have the words. And the most important part of this whole dynamic is not being able to explain to anybody about it. It is just allow yourself to make the decision, even if or especially if you can't explain the decision, all the factors into it, or why this is the best decision for you. The only obligation that I've, that I really feel I have along the spiritual path is to maintain those personal boundaries and, and uphold my own authenticity through these decisions, but, but I never have an obligation to explain that to any other soul above and beyond that. That's really a courtesy. It, there's, there's a whole lot of extra knowing and reflection that has to come after you've arrived at, hey, this is the best decision for me. Maybe I don't know why yet, but but in just going from a gut chakra level, this is the best decision for me. Well, there's some intuition download and, and some living in the new space that you create for yourself before you can really throw a bunch of words around it. So when I was just getting started on learning about boundaries, uh, learning how to identify irritations in my life, um, I wasn't skilled to really gracefully flow uh, in relationship with the, with the consciousnesses that were involved at the particular time to explain to them, hey, I'm making some changes and, and this is why it's the best change for me and this is what I'm going to do. Uh, a lot of times it would, I just might have, whoa, where, where'd Danny go? Like he's just not around anymore. And, and at that point in my life, the most skill that I had around the subject was just to honor myself, honor my boundaries and disengage. And, and, and I didn't have anything extra, the, the understanding or the courage or the energy to, to go and, you know, speak that message any further. So that's really the important point with self-allowance that, that I wanted to talk about is that you got to first allow yourself to make the decision, even though you might not be able to explain it. And, and that, that was a huge key for me along my spiritual journey. There was a lot in that. <laughs> <laughs> there was a lot in that for me. Because... <laughs> Because, you know, one of the first places I go whenever I'm thinking about most specifically social commitments or things like that, or it doesn't even have to be social commitments. It could be anything really, anything with the word commitment in it. There has always been this degree of guilt also associated or attached with that when one wants to extrapolate oneself from anything that has that in it 
or at least for me in my experience thus far in this incarnation. <laughs> and so that's why I said for me there was a lot in that. But I marvel at the well, see, and where I'm at right now in my journey too, I've I've I think I've <clears throat> because I've removed myself from all <laughs> uncomfortable situations already. Um not just uncomfortable, but sources of irritation as well as, you know, I think that might be why at this juncture I be well, to be fair, I was this close to leaving the planet. So, you know, I already had all my bags packed and all, you know, <laughs> I, so I didn't have a lot of, uh, those commitments or anything around, right? So now I'm more focused looking at all of these things, like you were just speaking, but in terms of moving forward for me in this juncture, what now I'm trying to create some, cause hey man, I, I was, you know, banana peeling it off the plan. <laughs> and that was my plan, that was my trajectory. Now I'm looking at something else here. I'm looking at, what am I ready to create and how I, and I'm so I've been doing a lot of self-reflection on that because in order to start creating in, in any fashion manifestational fashion in my mind or to be clear on what do I want to experience now now that I'm not banana peeling it off the plate Because I don't think that's the case. I think I'm. I think I'm sticking around a while. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> and it's been kind of fun. This week in particular. Uh, spending a lot of time in my imagination, if you will. Interesting. So, so what has this week been for you? There's been a lot of, again, looking out the window and a lot of um, slipping away into other realms, so to speak. Um, at times visionary, at times not and a lot of times i don't even know where the time goes it's like i'm sorry what day is this now <laughs> i know what to look we we just had this discussion right before we started recording too i i thought i had sent you an invitation last week at the end when we were done apparently i didn't i turned around and sent you the same invitation so i didn't <laughs> have one scheduled for this week when you contacted me, I sent you the same one from last week again. This is my point. I'm not all here right now. <laughs> I it's like I'm I I'm I don't know. It's really quite different, but it's 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 fun. It is been very solitary, um, sort of. So, well, I sometimes, you know, you, you just don't know. I, I, hmm. Because we're creator beings, am I, is this just in my head? You know, sometimes. I don't know. There are, there are things happening to me. I don't know how to explain it. Yeah, I, I went through... I went through an interesting few years where I was really wondering, gosh, am, am I just making all of this shit up? Like, cause there's, there's nobody else really that you can compare a line item, line item of different experiences and visuals and intuition downloads and just things that you can't apply a label to you. And, and, and oh, did did you get did you get this and this and this and this and and they happen when? Okay, all right. Well, I think we got something here. We, we don't have that. We've got, but 
Hey, here, here's my bucket of experiences that, that I scratch in my head about. And these are the types of things that are happening to me uh, on a continuing basis. And someone else can say, oh, hey, I've got a bucket full of similar things that the details are different. And, and it's not about the same facets of life. But yeah, I got the same kind of thing going on. And so we've got a whole bunch of people that have those kind of buckets. And, um, I, you know, it, it's about all of us putting these puzzle pieces together and, and giving them credit for being puzzle pieces. We don't have to assign a meaning or a mechanism onto any of it right now. Right. Um, well, I'm sort of feeling like it's, um, I've been calling it a creational flow of energy. Um, creational in that it feel, I'm, I, I'm feeling beckoned to think about, get clear on what it is I wish to experience. As a creator, if, if I'm, and I really do feel I've seen too much now. Get really clear on what I'd like to experience. So I'm spending a lot of time alone. Trying to get in, well, not trying, getting more comfortable with, you know, my own energy. <laughs> Making sure I know who I'm communicating with. <laughs> You know, I mean, cause apparently that's a thing. You know, you could you could be talking to somebody else. I think that's happened at least once, but I can't prove that either. You know, that's kind of weird too when stuff like that happens. You know, one of the uh, I think most comforting pieces of advice that that I got when. I was starting to feel like I was having communication with some other consciousness beings, entities that, that I really couldn't see or feel or, you know, tactile, I feel. Um, and just with my mind or if I was alone, even out loud, I would ask this being, I would let them know that, hey, I can, I can feel you there. I can sense you. Uh, at this phase on my journey, I'm only working with beings of a high divine nature that are here for my highest and best purposes and the highest and best purposes of all their, that are involved. And if you are such a being, please identify yourself. That's a good uh, piece of advice. Thank you. Yeah, well, it, it really... It helped. If I don't get a response back, then then I don't deal with them. Well, I've really just been trying to establish communication with my my own self, really. I mean, a good, clear, that's what I'm asking for. That's what I'm working on. But there have been a few times where... I'm beginning to suspect too that uh, it's like we, when when they, you know, when folks talk about being multidimensional, it really is on several levels. I think that's where some of my confusion comes in sometimes. It's like um, I think I'm communicating with folks on different levels, and even I don't need good because I can't sustain it or whatever it's like i get little glimpses and little feels of that communication very fleeting sometimes sometimes almost like lucid dreaming but not actually lucid dreaming that i'm aware of as i'm not i've not actually had a lucid dream all i've had is you know, we discussed before acid, so I don't know about that. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so anyway, yeah, a lot of uh, 
just introspection about that and you know just establishing that communication or level you know that clarity of communication with myself first because I have had a few instances where I feel like there's some sort of communication or, or like I said some sort of feeling like like I've been somewhere and I've done something and I've been a part of something that's just like fleeting around the edges and I want to so I, if I, I have to get really good and clear communication with myself so when that kind of stuff happens I can trust what I'm getting about that you know I've had little kind of deja vu type of fleeting experiences my whole life and the words you use to describe uh, what you're experiencing are, are words that I could use to describe this. Uh, oh, just that there, there's a couple predominant feelings, just uh, like a sense inside me that, that I've had pretty much my whole life. And I remember walking to school. It, it was either junior high or high school one day. Um, and just this feeling hit me as I'm walking down the neighborhood streets that, gosh, all of this is just fake. None of it's real. And, and it, was, it was really such a, a potent feeling that, that it stuck with me ever since. And, and I think that that feeling has really led to the truth-seeking uh, that, that I found myself on later in life and then really finding out that, oh my gosh, it is all fake. Um, the, the other sense that I've had is that uh, I feel like I had a hand in building this huge il illusory construction. <laughs> Well, see, that's what I'm feeling this creational energy is about. So that would make sense to me. That's why I'm feeling this. Um, hmm. Okay, like, so, I don't know, three days, three or, three or four days ago, something or, or another, I can't even remember exactly when, like I said, everything's kind of running together. I got this, what felt like packets of information, I guess. I don't know what else to call it because it was very clearly something, but it wasn't all, I didn't, I don't understand it all. Um, but I've been having this feeling that this energy is about the, it's a, like a creational energy, this, ener this energetic that I've been feeling. And it has to do with creating, you know, I don't know. Okay, I can't, I can't believe I'm about to say this out loud, but I'm going to because, because it's, uh, because it's in there. Okay, so everybody keeps talking about the event, right? The event, the event, the event. I think the event is springing from it within us, each one of us. And there's an energetic attached to it that feels very creational in nature, at least for me. And I have felt this intense drive and push to get really clear within myself of what I wish to experience moving forward because it's here now. The, whatever this energetic is that I'm feeling is here and it's very, it feels very, it's palpable. It's creational in, in nature. It feels like to me, I don't know how else to explain it. I know that I'm not making sense probably. Well, we're just putting training wheels on describing new facets along the spiritual journey that pop up. This is what it's like when you have an experience and you've 
really don't have any idea how to share what's going on with another soul, it really helps if I have already had the exact same experience that you've had. And then we can both kind of in the dark fumble around and get words together. But when there's, when it's only you that's, that you're sure of that's had the experience, then to relay that experience, especially when it's far enough of, of a departure from the things we normally experience in life, there's no direct analogies to draw from, you might as well be trying to explain the color red to someone who's blind and has been blind their whole life. Right. No, that's, that's exactly the way it feels sometimes. Um, yeah, it's, it's different and it's, um, and, and it just, it, and it ebbs and it, it ebbs and flows too, you know, it moves, picks up speed and then it wanes. So it's very dreamy energy still too, though, for me anyway, very sort of dreamy and, um, Hmm. Like I said, different. <laughs> yeah. Well, I spend most of my, well, most of the, most of my time of my choosing, I spend in, in a, in a dreamy state and the, the labels that I've heard applied to this particular state are, are the hypnopompic and hypnagogic state. And they're the, they're the, they're the, you know, from fully conscious, it's the path that you go to on your way to sleep and then on your way out of. It's that it's that section. It depends on which direction you're going. It's hypnopompic or hypnagogic, but but that state is where I find most of these magical type of visionary connective experiences happen in. They seem to be now. So is it possible to have that state go on even when you're like wandering around? Sometimes I feel that. I, I think so. It's there's there, the, at least for me, there seems to be a certain, uh, what words to describe it? A certain way to hold my consciousness or a certain it just in the ways that we were talking about, Oh, I can make with my thoughts, the color swirl clockwise or counterclockwise. There's also some, some effect that you can have on your own consciousness. And with thought you can, uh, or I've been able to attain, it feels like a certain level of peace, a certain level of absence of irritations with just my own self inside the, the thoughts that continually come to me where I can achieve this particular dreamy visionary state. Sure. I've, I've had it when I've been physically active, you know, out walking, uh, in nature, um, exercising outside, you know, even, even playing games and being among other people and, and being snapped into visionary experiences there, they are fleeting, but, but a couple seconds that has these download packets, especially when it's got a full emotional component in it. Uh, you know, I could be, I could be throwing a Frisbee or something to somebody have one of these experiences happen and, you know, my next couple minutes is just about uh, just trying to hold myself together, you know, not cry when I'm playing Frisbee, <laughs> you know, because the, the, the visionary part usually has nothing to do with the activity that I'm in. Right, right. Um, yeah. Hmm, interesting. Well, I've never had anything like this before, so this is just, this is very, very interesting for me. Yeah, well, it was for me when it all started popping up for the first time, too. Wow. 
Well, I highly recommend this journey. <laughs> I do. I highly recommend this journey. It's more interesting than everything that's come before it. <laughs> Absolutely. I can't think of anything else I'd rather do, to be honest. Yeah. Yeah, my visionary journey, it started off just talking about these handful of experiences that I've had. And then as time went on, it just, like it was just talking about what is in the now, because they, they just keep happening. And there's some, there's a self-reinforcing loop in all of this. And it really became apparent to me when I went on a road trip, <clears throat> went, went to a, a conference down in Arizona a few years ago. And uh, when you're all of a sudden with a whole bunch of people that don't know you, you find yourself introducing yourself to a lot of people and giving a little nutshell, you know, about who you are, because that's what everybody's asking you. And I noticed that I just kept saying the same things about myself and about this visionary types of things I was experiencing. And while I'm on this road trip, just those affirmations that I was giving to people and saying, yeah, I'm a visionary. I have visions all the time. God, my visions just got more powerful and more frequent just, just during that time frame. So, I mean, we, we are creator beings in that sense. And, and you can, affirm these new types of experiences that uh, that you want to have going forward. Um, there's, there's just so much magic in this whole realm of exploration that, that I think the way I target it is not so much in what I want to experience next because I don't, I don't know the, all the experiences that are really available to me, but, but I know how I want to feel. I want to feel peace and joy and excitement and love and happiness. And I just ask that grace maximize those qualities. Uh, as she continues to bring me my experiences. And, and if, if these experiences continue to depart from the norm the mainstream reality, that's just going to really ramp up the excitement for me. Yeah. What you said. <laughs> I, I just wanted to say ditto to that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That, that. Well, I feel like, uh, there's a reason I've been given this idea that it's time to get clear on what I wish to experience. There's a reason that came in that like that for me. Not sure what it is, but okay, I'm ready. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you'll, you'll know it when, when the right set of ideas comes to you and, and that's right for you. You're just going to know it. You're going to be like, yep, yep, that's it. Kind of yeah. like your channel. Oh, yeah, I want to sit and have mind-blowing conversations all day long. Put them up yeah. on YouTube. Yeah, that's, that's right. That, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, it's coming in. It's going to be fun, though. Yeah, well, uh, have you had a chance to listen to uh, – well, just totally non sequitur here. <laughs> Had a chance to listen to Hat J and VZ's conversation. Oh yes, yes, we did. I think we did a conversation right after it. I'll right. have to. Go, I'll have to go check that out. Yeah, the three of us, uh, VZ, Lisa, and I, did. I think that might be partly why. I mean, I don't know. Wait a minute. Wow, hold up. <laughs> wow concentrating on the end result hmm wonder if that might be partly why i got this oh my word for crap's sake danny i didn't even see that if if we are all concentrating on what we want to see in the end result no reason no wonder 
I feel like I've given myself a directive to get clear on what I want so that I can focus on the end result. Yeah, again, for me, way the slow, way in the back. Good Lord, sometimes it takes me a while. No, I think you're probably right on schedule. You're right on time. Maybe a couple minutes early. I didn't, well, I didn't, I didn't see it until just now. So that was interesting. Hmm. Well, cool. At least I'm paying attention to myself. Regardless of what, what I'm doing, I'm paying attention to myself because I've been working. That's, I've done nothing else but that, really. Well, that's interesting. Thank you for pointing that out to me. If I, I think you pointed it out to yourself. Well, <clears throat> because nothing is happening in a vacuum, it's all right there, isn't it? It's, it's all, it's all is all, it's all is all. All becomes transparent now, it's all right there. Oh my word, my goodness. That's very interesting to me. Why didn't I see that until you said that? Hmm. Sometimes the intricacies of how we set up our own journeys is a bit interesting to me. Because I can see things like, like this right here. That is something that I just did not in the forefront right here in the front row of my consciousness pick up on until you just said that. And I find that interesting, but I didn't. Hmm. There must have been some other reason that I uh, of everything for me to consider to not have that in the forefront of my consciousness to consider as a reasoning while I was considering all these other things. I know I'm having a very one-sided conversation. I'm sorry. <laughs> This is this is good to record because this is what the the bulk of the spiritual journey has been for me has been like okay like I feel like wow I'm on the verge of just clicking together some huge pieces and and I just got to sit with it until they do and and the way you click them together is by playing with them by by talking about them well, and that's you're 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 exactly right. That was one of the reasons that I did want us to have this kind of a, a conversation channel because it's exactly this kind of a safe space where you have that you can speak with someone that a won't think you're crazy, will be help tease out the crazy to help because sometimes teasing out the crazy helps bring out the brilliance from behind the crazy. I don't mean crazy as in crazy, but you know what I mean, I think. Well, there are ideas that we have that sound radically intense uh, when compared to normal mainstream ideas. <clears throat> and if all you have is a mainstream mindset, you're going to label them as crazy, label them as lunacy. And until you really inspect these ideas and respect them and see how they're put together, uh, you're not going to know if there's any higher order of brilliance in there or not. And you're playing around with a whole lot of ideas uh, in your field and in your journey. And uh, it's almost like the ideas came into you in a bucket as some cream and you're just churning them, churning them, churning them. You spent a week and all you're doing is churning this cream and you can feel it. Like this cream is starting to act a little bit differently right now. I can tell that just about on any one of these next strokes, whole bunch of these ideas are going to clump up 
we're going to have some a mass that we can pull out and we're going to have some other stuff that well maybe we don't know what to do with but we got a chunk right here and it'll butter our bread right no you're right about that wow And we have we don't have the advantage of like on a jigsaw puzzle. We look at the cover of the box. We're like, <laughs> I know what this is supposed to look like. We we don't have that luxury here. Oh, for heaven's sakes! Thank you for that, actually, because I've had I've had that discussion recently about being a puzzle piece collector without a without a puzzle box lid to look at oh uh, okay yeah well that's part of the journey isn't it <laughs> at least it is for me apparently <laughs> well that's a journey that we pretty much all have um anybody i know that's uh playing around with their pieces, trying to match a particular image that they have in their head, that image on the lid of the puzzle box, uh, that image was given to them. It wasn't something that they came up with on their own. No, and it changes all the time, so good luck with that. Yeah. That's my point, too. It's that, that image, give it, it's, it's kind of like the weather, give it five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> well, and this is why it's so important to remain in that pending state. You know, as soon as you, as soon as you stop the decision-making process, you know, you, you've just manifested a facet into reality. As soon as yeah. you decide on a particular set of ideas as, as your new reality, well, guess what? you now have depended into that set of ideas. Yeah. I am depending upon this view of reality. I love talking to you. <laughs> It's been so, it's been so cool this week and so different at the same time. Um, a lot of sleeping going on too, for me, you know, whenever, Because sort of it's really that that real dreamy energy for some reason, then and, and then the energy ramps really hard too at, 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 in different times, and then it backs off. And I can sometimes uh, it's like it. I don't know. Now last night I didn't sleep all, very well at night, late. It's like I woke up in the middle of the night. I was up for a bit. That was different. Because I don't usually have trouble sleeping. In the last three years, anyway. Hmm. Well, you've been spending a lot of time sleeping lately, right? Even, even doing some sleeping during the day? Yeah. Yeah. Which is something I never do. Well, any time that, uh, you know, my schedule gets all messed up like that and I've been sleeping a lot, uh, sometimes it's hard to fall asleep at the, the normal times. Yeah, this is, this is different, though, in that I got woke up. Hmm. So this one was different, which was kind of weird, but... Some, some, sometimes an energetic can wake you up. Have you ever had that? I mean, I wake up at weird times all the time. Yeah. Yeah. I gotcha. Well, I just hadn't had it in a long time. Happened like that for me. It was kind of weird. It was different. 
Yeah. So, um, so now, how how was your week? Was that really all all that transpired for you? Did you? I'm sorry, I didn't mean to go all weird <laughs> and dreamy and off in all kinds of wild directions. As 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 you can tell, it's been just different around here. For uh, me. I, I can tell. I mean, I've had <clears throat> I've just had a week of reflection, really, a week of reflection, a week of. Uh, Well, just it, it's been a journey to 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 bring myself to some additional peace, and uh, the the path that I walked was slightly different than the paths that I had walked to to find peace in the past, and and I think I found a little bit more peace this time because uh, really nowhere along any of this journey did. Did I make any of the irritations that I was feeling in my journey make that a responsibility or, or to let somebody know that this is where I'm feeling irritations and it's, it's coming from, from you, you know, even to passive aggressively ask for changes. Um, so I just, I, I really, all I did was said, uh, I've, I've been, thinking for a while now about cutting back uh, on, on these commitments and uh, what I have right now feels too much. So I, I need to, need to do this for myself. And what that does is now nobody's got homework assignments. Nobody's got labels on their consciousness that are any, any different than, than they really put on there for themselves. And you know, we can, we can still relate and, and be friends and have fun. It's just, uh, I, I don't have the, I don't have all these duties and expectations on me now that, uh, yeah. <clears throat> that really weren't satisfying in my life. Well, I think the reason I admire that when you were speaking it before, cause I felt it again just now. The reason, one of the reasons I think I'm, I admire that so much is that that's not something that I've done for myself a lot in my life. Honor how I feel in regards to taking that sort of a step and, and, and feeling actually very good about it. And, and, of course, again, because of where I'm at, I don't have any decisions or, you know, any commitments for me to test out on myself, but at this juncture of which I'm grateful. However, I would like to say that I admire that because I, were I to have those in my field, I would like to be able to say that I, I can and will do that for myself. As that's where I'm at, and at, at this juncture, that's kind of why I think when I said about getting clear about what I want as I move forward, has to actually even do with some of that. You see what I mean? So being clear with what I'm willing to mm, step into in the future or not even see mm -hmm. that's why I wanted to acknowledge what you said about in regards to that. Cause I do, I admire that you honored yourself and that's, um, that's something that I very much intend to do for myself m moving forward. Something that I've not actually done before. It's, it's a learning process. I mean, I've still got training wheels on it. I mean, it, it took me, it took me a, a basically a week at home of, of sleeping all day and, and being in the stress of evaluating all sides of this, this decision. And, uh, it was, you know, I, I certainly talked about it with some, with some trusted people that are close to me and it, it just, it doesn't happen easy. It, and, and even so it's, there, there are some, 
uh, there are some mixed feelings in it just because, okay, well, there, there were some, there were some people, uh, part of this group that, that really did not contribute any of the irritating, irritating energy at all. And so, uh, you know, they're, they're certainly, uh, affected by, by my decision to, to resign and, you know, that, that part stinks because, because they didn't do anything to bring it about. Um, not that, not that anybody did anything to bring it about. It's just, I'm just, I'm just seeing the, seeing the dynamics and the situation for what it is. And, and right. I guess there's some systemic issues where these types of opportunities uh, for people to make these choices are, are going to keep being presented and, and you know, it, it just, there needs to be changes with the way everything's run in order for it to really feel less irritating. And so to recognize that uh, really, it just takes everyone off the hook. And if and this is really where we get into my definition for forgiveness. And when you break down the word forgiveness, the way I break it down is for like before or early and then give. And when you, when you really think about it, the only person that, uh, well, if, if we're all going to experience forgiveness, the only person that can bring that to us is us. We have been indoctrinated in the system to give of ourselves, of our energy and our time to others, to outside of us before we take care of ourselves. It's backwards. We need to give to ourselves before we give to anyone else. And so what I did in this situation was to give to myself, to bring myself back to a relative level of peace, closer to my platform of agency. Uh, I take care of myself, and I look around, wait for everyone to take care of themselves. Well, then we're all going to be in a state of forgiveness. All of our needs are going to be met. And then, wow, what are the conversations going to be like then? Because right now, all the conversations that we have really are about the irritations that we're experiencing in life and, and how do we separate ourselves from those irritations and how do we keep them at bay? And, uh, well, actually it's more like dan with most folks, it's more like dancing around the, how do we do all of that rather than because that, that, the, how do we do all of that? Well, you just showed, you just showed a wonderful, beautiful illustration as to how you take some time alone and you figure out, you know, what the irritation level is and you deal with it. Right. I mean, that's pretty much what you've done with this irritation level. We've all got those. Everyone has those irritation levels. You, you, you were just saying that for yourself. And in a lot of those situations, most of those conversations have been dancing around that subject because the actual doing of that subject, well, that it's a little harder <laughs> what you did. It's not, and it's not. But boy, is it rewarding, isn't it? It, it certainly is to, <clears throat> well, it's more rewarding in this particular instance uh, for me because I got a slightly different outcome than I had in the past. And that's because I took a little bit more time and did a little bit more self-reflection and, uh, resisted the urge to uh, to throw my truth out before I had reflected. And 
at prior times along my journey, I may have spit that truth out a little bit too early. I might have used phrasing that was a little bit more intense than was necessary. Um, but the bottom line is everyone that was part of that situation would have known uh, that I was irritated up to a really intense level. And um, I, I just know that in the past, a lot of the salvageable connections from, you know, or, or, you know, valuable connections that I had with other beings would have really suffered or did suffer. And um, I think that was a result primarily of the labels that I would have thrown on while speaking my truth uh, a little bit before it was before it was time, those labels, uh, you know, had judgment in them and homework assignments for, for other people. And the only labels that I, that I put out and anything that I said were, were about me and about what I thought was, was too much for me to handle at this particular point along my journey. And, and so it lets everyone off the hook. Um, really, all I wanted was to, to get out from under the expectations of having to continually flow with, with a particular situation where I didn't have the support that I needed to, to get it done on a continual basis. And right. so once I get out from under that, well, if other people want to come later and ask me if something was a, a factor in my decision, I'd be willing to sit down and talk with them about that. But, but right now, they've got the choice uh, to pick up the reins that I just let go of and continue with it and have their own experience around it. And it's, it'll just be interesting to see what happens. Yeah. It's all choosing, choosing, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, and if we allow ourselves to make the decision that's best for us in the moment, and always allow other people to make the decision that's best for them in the moment, that's the prerequisite for having total forgiveness. We have to allow people to identify what's best for them and then to choose what's best for them. Right. And this is where the golden rule comes into play. What you choose is best for you, you know, don't, you know, don't say, well, you know, I, I'm a homicidal maniac and what's best for me is I need to go kill 10 other people. Well, you can't, that that doesn't compute that that decision impacts other people's journey and doesn't let them express their free will so the golden rule is hey you choose what's best for you so that it doesn't have adverse impacts on other people and you just allow that the same you allow everyone to do the same uh thing yeah do no harm comes to mind right yeah you know harm. But there's a lot of people who will <clears throat> label us reclaiming our power or withdrawing our energy from a particular situation as you're doing harm. And so my point here is that withdrawing your energy from a situation, uh, uh, that, that's, that's doing no harm. Well, <clears throat> I've had that happen. I've had that happen where that's getting said, that that's, you know, doing harm. Well, and that's an opinion. And more often than not, at least when, whenever that's been something I've been involved in, that opinion is based on agenda. Well, it shows that there's an expectation. Again, the agenda. Yeah. For me. That's, yeah. Yeah, well, speaking of agendas and expectations, I saw that uh, Hat J had a new round of extension filings for uh, post-verdict motions. Um, I, I'm not quite sure what to make of this second extension because it looks like some undisclosed error or action or inaction by Francis Lloyd has caused a delay in the transcripts being available? 
I'm not sure what that's talking about. The only thing that I'm aware of is that they, because of, I'm not quite sure. Something to do with the, the availability of the transcripts is what I understood. Now you're saying that this, because I, I only did a cursory glance at it. Mm-hmm. Is it stating that there was something that he didn't file on time or something? Yeah, I, I made a few videos <clears throat> and posted them today just reading through the paperwork. Um, what I understand is the first request to extend the deadline for filing uh, post-verdict motions was because the, the transcripts weren't ready and they weren't going to be ready uh, for another 30 days. So they granted a motion. Um, the second motion was, it looks like was authored by Francis Lloyd and it says that it was due to uh, an administrative error on his part. Uh, of why these transcripts were going to be delayed and 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 it's it it really made me wonder what's going on here because how i'm just wondering what possibly could francis lloyd have done or failed to do that's going to have any impact on when these transcripts are released my perception of this whole court reporting process is that these transcripts are going to be generated regardless of whether or not Heather is going to request a copy of them. They're, they're, these transcripts are used for other things. So the fact that Heather has to file an extension the first time, these transcripts aren't going to get back uh, in the normal time period that the court has allotted by their normal procedures and that the second motion comes forward stating that there's a delay because of an, an administrative error on Francis Lloyd's part. I, I just, I just wonder what's going on. What, what am I either not understanding about the process? Uh, anyways, the, the long and the short of it is when I do the math, it's not going to be till the end of April that these transcripts are going to be ready. Uh, this latest uh, motion to extend was filed on the 23rd of March, I think, so three days ago. And it mentions that there's going to be an additional 30-day delay. So we're looking at April 23rd, I, I'm guessing at the earliest. And uh, they asked for an extension all the way to the end of May. They said the last half of May is what Heather had requested. Judge Varlin citing, oh, we need to, we need to make sure that the docket on the courts is uh, run through in an efficient manner, so we can't give you till the end of May. We can only give you to May 7th. So Heather still doesn't even have the transcripts, not going to have the transcripts until the 23rd of April, roundabouts, I'm guessing. And then she's only got two weeks to read through the transcripts, which we don't even know if they're complete. We don't even, like, do we need to file correction requests or anything like that? And then to author up any motions, the, this transcript is going to be huge. It's going to be so many pages worth. And to, to expect that uh, either Heather or Randy in the lockdown conditions or just the conditions that they're in in the jail with their golf pencils and no pencil sharpener are going to read through a thousand pages of document and write up motions with their little golf pencils uh, and, and only have two weeks to do it. And we don't even know if, if the transcripts are when they're going to be delivered yet. So, uh, there's just puzzling things going on with this whole ball of wax. Yeah, I know. And I'm, I'm not really clear on what that whole 
um, clerical error thing is either, to be honest. I, I don't I don't know about that. I have a suspicion, but it's more intuition than anything else. <clears throat> I don't, I don't, I don't get it either because I thought the whole point of stenography is that it's going in right then. So why it's taking so long, A, is a question. Um, and it's my understanding, B, that, well, if you're paying for the transcripts, you can get them quite quickly, actually. So what the reasoning is behind that. But in order to pay for them, it's like over five or six grand. From my understanding, I mean, from what I saw when I was looking into that whole court thing, I mean, for crap's sake, just searching. Just you can get a free search account, but just searching and the pacer cost you a dime even if you don't find what you're searching for it still costs you a dime even if it's a zero result <laughs> it costs you yeah. 10 cent so i'm like who's got the kind of cash for that kind of stuff nobody so i don't really i don't know it's all a racket i don't get what's going on with that at all i feel it as stall tactics i don't Again, I got nothing I could point to other than my own intuition and my own feeling. It's all stalling tactics. There's something that's not in place yet somewhere along the line. Because I've now, I'm not looking at this as a us and them kind of thing anymore. I'm looking at this as a universal cleanup. Sure as shit. From A to Z. <laughs> that's what this is. So something isn't quite where it needs to be. And so something's not being released as of yet because whatever, I'm not even sure, but I can feel hashtag becomes transparent now as a real thing. I can feel agendas a mile away all of a sudden. I don't know why, but I feel like I can. Not with that. No, I was going to I was about to say not with everything, but no, I think I can with everything. I got a feeling the only reason I wouldn't sense an agenda is because I don't want to see it for some reason. Yeah. Other than that, I think I would see an agenda a mile away right now because I've, I've seen a few. Mm -hmm. In shocking places. But So I don't know. I don't know what that's about. I feel like, I think because I've been so dreamy, I, have, I really don't know because I haven't checked in on anything lately. You know, I told you about that. There's, there's a big piece with that whole Federal Reserve thing we talked about last time. And I know I'm aware that I didn't send you that, but I do have it to send you if you're so interested in seeing it. Um, I looked on there that they, they issue a whole bunch of cease and desist orders like it. I, I haven't found the China one yet. Well, there's, 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 there's big things going on. I feel like just under the surface and I just, and I think that all of it, every single thing in this reality and things that aren't in this reality and some of those dream it's like this big, there's a, hmm. it's almost like a, <laughs> I got this picture streaming into my head that it's like showtime. You, you've got to move over here. You know, there's somebody behind the scenes directed stuff. That's why, you know what I mean? It's like, it's on, on an etheric level almost. I just now got this sense of a whole bunch of directors saying, nope, we're not, don't, don't cue them over there yet. We're not ready for that. <laughs> you know, that kind of thing. Sometimes I 
It's like I feel that vibe going on just under the surface. I don't know. Did you see that? Well, I don't know what's involved in this quite yet because I haven't dug into it and read the articles. I just saw a headline, but there's something about uh, China released a gold-backed yuan. There's a lot of people right now claiming that that this time tomorrow there there's going to be a reset or or the RV, you know, everything that's been talked about about that for a while. That's why I said there's this, even though I haven't really been looking into anything because because my attention span for looking at stuff right now is very, like I said, I've been more, I've been more gazing out the window, <laughs> out the window, you know, like a daydreamer than anything. But, but, but this every now and again, I'll go and just look at a few things and I'll, I'll just put a toe in for a second and pull it right back out because there's a lot of nervous energy out there right now. It feels mm -hmm. like so. Yeah, I saw something about this. They're calling it the Petro Wand. Mm, I mean, I mean that's that's huge. Uh, the The reason that's huge is <clears throat> the U.S. has been enforcing the dollar as the global reserve currency or basically it's the only form of currency that you can use to buy petroleum with oil and there has been an awful lot of talk amongst various countries throughout uh you know the past few decades of you know what we're you know, either going to drop out of OPEC or, you know, we're just, we're, we're going to start selling uh, our oil and we're going to take other currencies for it. And I remember that that was one of the, the things that Saddam Hussein had wanted to do um, before we went in and put our troops on their soil. And, and it's just really interesting how much how much energy and willful conscious decisions the United States has put towards keeping the dollar as the only currency that you can use to buy oil with. And this is a absolute huge change that if there's all of a sudden another currency in place, uh, it's, it's a trap door underneath the dollar. It's just the bottom's going to drop out. Well, you see, the, you, you, you know that Libya tried to do the same thing, right? I'm sure a lot of countries have tried yeah. to do the same thing. Well, see, that's, that's just it. That's, that's why I'm saying this is... Hmm, okay, so I don't really understand the whole thing, but also it was my understanding that, you know, the Federal Reserve had their 100 years, and they were supposed to turn it over to China and Russia, that's why the AIIB and the BRICS alliance and that whole thing came about to begin with because it was supposed to be their turn, you see. So when, when you say the Federal Reserve had it for 100 years, you're talking from 1913 to 2013? And, and, and that's the... The, the ability to print and control the value of money in the United States. Is yeah. that what you're talking about? Yeah. Yeah. And exactly. that they were supposed to let go of that to who? Well, this is where it's a little fuzzy for me because I'm not sure where these puzzle pieces came from and I'm not sure I could put, point to them, but there are to those who have said that, at that hundred year mark, it was supposed to be other factions, if you will, it was supposed to be their turn. 
and I don't even know how true any of that is, to be honest with you, but it just seems very interesting to me the way this is all going down right now, because it's all the same girl, different party dress. Really, I mean, you know, the end result of it is that they're all the same entity, pretty much, all of them. And they don't, any of them have any right to do what they're doing. We all know what fractional reserve banking is. It's making money up out of nothing. <laughs> well, it's even worse than that. I mean, I know. It's, it's making money up out of nothing and saying, you know what? I'm the only one that can make it up and I'll make up $10,000 here, but you got to pay me back 20,000 and I'm only going to create 10,000. Yeah. <laughs> I know. I love the way that I love, I'm telling you when people really get, get a grip on what banking is, it's like, my God, that was a scam created by geniuses, but, but, but boy, it's kind of, I feel kind of dopey at this moment of now. <laughs> When you really find out and figure out what it is they've been doing, it's like, I'm sorry, we agreed to that. What? Yeah, it's off the charts. I mean, and and for me to go through four years, well, actually, I was on the five-year undergrad plan, so five years and get an accounting degree and then take that an extra two years in grad school and then work as a financial analyst for corporate loan approvals in a major bank uh, for uh, another year and a half on top of that. And at no time in any of that training or on the job training or experience, did I ever learn about the fractional nature, the fractional reserve debt-based nature of money creation. By the way, you're not alone. I too, uh, I didn't have, I didn't do the college route. I only did bookkeeping for small business, but I did do the accounting thing and on the job training for accounting. I did, you know, construction accounting, all of that sort of thing, you know, on the job. And it wasn't until, you know, 2009 that I, I actually learned what fractional reserve banking was. And I'm, it's like when you, when you really take that in for a second, it's like, Holy crap. Holy crap. For me, that was the big one right there, to be honest with you. That's what started it all for me. That right there. I'm sorry. They're, they're doing what now? <laughs> how does that work again? I want to know how. how yeah, that's, that's a good gig if you can get it. I'm going to create. I love the way you put that, by the way, just now when you said that before. I'm going to create this. I'm going to create this $10 bill right here and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give it to you. But, but, but you got to give me $40 for it. <laughs> Wait a minute. What? That's what it ends up being. Yeah. Yeah. It's musical chairs with, with our monetary system and the basic needs of life. Yeah. Well, that's why I feel like there's so much going on just underneath the surface with all of this, because now a lot more people really are getting to understand what fractional reserve banking is. If you're watching this video and you don't know, go Google it, look it up. Yeah. Uh, G. Edward Griffin's The Creature from Jekyll Island is a really good source. And then another one is Ellen Brown's Web of Debt. Both are great descriptions of, of how the Federal Reserve came to be and exactly how they create money. And no money is ever created until somebody signs a promissory note and agrees to go in the debt for it. That's the problem. Yeah, well, and, and actually it's so much deeper than that. What, we, what I feel now, um, this whole thing with um, Heather has shown me so much about consciousness and spirituality and what this really is about. For me, there's, it, there's so much more. It's so much bigger. That's just the tip of the iceberg for me. That 
I, what I've learned in the last few months, I was looking back at, I cannot believe that I've really only been talking to you for two months. I was looking back at one of our first videos and I was like, I cannot believe I've only been doing this and learning about all of this for just a couple of months. My, I, it just feels so huge. Everything feels so huge and so much bigger. I, it feels like forever and yet not. I don't know how to explain it. But this knowing that we are the value over and above all of that, that we, and now I'm beginning to suspect why it is we're the value, by the way. This creational energy that I'm feeling, the fact that we are creators, this is why we are the value. because we can generate creation uh, rather easily. We are the val, oh gosh, I'm sorry. That, that just came in so huge just now for me. That's what that's all about. That's why we're the value. Because once we start realizing what it is we can create because we are creators, Right now, the training wheels are on because I think for my own self, because we don't know what we're wielding yet. Hmm. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to watch it all unfold. Yes. For sure. Yes, and I, it's going, it's, I know everybody's sick of hearing soon, but I do feel imminent instant. Things are, mm -hmm. it's like jo stuff's jostling just under, I again, it's only been a couple of months. I can't believe for me, the, 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 the amount of stuff that has taken place just since December, I'll just go with December because of the executive order that was issued on December 21st, 2017. I'm going with that as my date, as my demarcation point. Because of that executive order, that did something for me that pulled a lot of this into the 3D physical world that was, until that point, I really only saw in a different realm and some sort of, I don't think I grasped it all even then at all, really. But for me, that was a deep demarcation point. I think there's going to be a lot of people that are going to be picking over this whole Hat J experience for many years to come to, to figure out what it was. We're only going to know the details when we look in the rearview mirror. It's impossible for us to know exactly everything that's going on right now. And I think that's what makes it so exciting is, you know, we get these little details in little snippet at a time. Yes, that's part of it. Yes, it is. The other thing is, is that it's, for me personally, it's allowing some things to be unpacked at my own pace. I can see that clearly right now too, actually. Because some things, I think, yeah. Because a lot of these things I think I'm seeing in uh, in a 3D way can be seen in a, a different way as well. I'm really beginning to see this multidimensional level thing. We do live on a lot of different levels. We exist, we play, we operate on a lot of different levels. 
and I'm beginning to feel like it's the level where, oh, I wonder if it's our focus and attention that will drive whichever level we, because I've seen glimpses of them happening simultaneously. I've felt and experienced some of those surreal things that, you know, we were talking about earlier, where you, a snippet of conversation that it was just having somewhere else with someone else, I think, and then, no, wait a minute. No, I'm not there. I'm here. What, now who was that? And what was I, you know, it's very, remember we were talking about it when I said it's very fleeting, these glimpses of doing something in another realm. Yeah. Even sometimes with people that I don't know, or I have no idea who they are or whatever, but I've had a conversation or I've had an experience that Mm -hmm. lets me very fleetingly, very quickly know that, okay, that was experience on a different level, different realm, whatever, dimension, where, whatever, but it's happening right now. And it's the overlap or whatever you want to call it for me. Anyway, this is me trying to pull this information (laughs) and not doing a very good job of it. Like I say, this is this is where we find ourselves when we've got new experiences to talk about that we don't have a subset of words for already. Yep, and this is this is this one's different, so different. But so you have things like that, and you just so I know I've been experiencing things on all these different levels, and then I can see some of these things with the hat J, with the different people that have been involved in this hat J thing, even with you to a degree, having these experiences on these different levels and seeing how they're relating in on this level too, it's all very interesting. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, well, that was, you got a lot more substance in your, in your verb. It's that time that, that feels good. Yeah. Well, trying to pull in an, uh, an, an decidedly etheric experience that one could say, oh, well, you were just imagining that. Hmm. Okay, maybe, maybe not. Um, especially <clears throat> when you get some confirmation in, in, in other realms of your 3D life, let's say. Like the little things over here that, that seem to add up to or point to this being this experience yes it did take place you see what i mean i I think i've got an example that'll kind of okay uh yes help me about the pattern that that you're that you're speaking of here um yeah when when these experiences started happening to me and and i didn't really have anything to compare them with or a box to put them in or I was wondering am I just making this stuff up and and it's nice to have some extra confirmation come in and this one particular time that I'm thinking of uh, I was laying in bed in the dark uh, it was probably about 2 30 in the morning and didn't have any music on nothing like that and I felt a presence and I had my eyes closed and on my third eye, I just, it was all black except for the center. And it, to me, it just looked like, uh, like a clip art silhouette of maybe an angel. And I had already had my conversation with the universe that I just told you about, about, I only, 
work with entities of a high vibrational divine nature that are here for my highest and best purposes and the highest and best purposes of everybody else. So, you know, I, I reaffirm that and, and I ask if they would identify themselves <clears throat> and the response that I got back clear as day inside my head was we're the archangels of the Elohim and we're here working on your third eye. I said, okay. The next day when I got up and I was checking my YouTube subscriptions in the morning, there was a particular channel that has, it's a compilation channel of all these different uh, mediums that claim to channel, say, Archangel Michael, Archangel Raphael, um, and it's just a compilation and all of them get put in here and and these channels are just text but there's a speech generator so you just listen to this generated speech and at this particular time in my life this channel was part of my subscriptions and uh, I, I played the first one because the title said message from the archangels of the Elohim and I played it and it said, uh, be ready for us. We're going to be coming by in the next couple of days and placing a dove on your third eye. And that's exactly what had happened to me just the night before, you know, that it, it looked like a clip art version of an angel, but it was, it was kind of like an ink blot test. Could it easily been a dove, but just to have that come in my 3d waking experience, the following morning after having that experience with, with apparently the same spiritual entity and the same descriptive things that they were saying they were doing, that was potent. There's something going on. Right. That's so, so you had that experience and then you saw the video. Yeah. Yeah. See, that's what I'm talking about too. You have an experience an etheric, an ethereal, uh, like you said, could be in your own head. You know, I, I'm, I'm a bit um, analytical that way, so I'm willing to go that I might be just full goose bozo. I've, I've been told that I am, so you know. I'm not putting any stock in those folks with their letters after their name because. Pr- Quite frankly, they told me a lot of things that I no longer believe. But <clears throat> so to have that experience and then see it referred to in the 3D physical realm, uh, for me, that's, that's, that's all I need. That's for me, that's confirmation that that's that I'm not full goose bozo. Thank you very much. And um, that it is a a real thing. And therefore, so I just keep going (laughs) in that direction right now, because that's what that's what this is. That's what's taking place over here. Up in here. And a lot of it has had to do with this stuff with Heather. A lot of what is going on, I can see as happening in a lot of different realms all at once. And I, and I, hmm. it's so, It's awe-making for me. Does that, I mean, I just, I have no other word than that. Some of the things I've experienced behind this entire thing from the very beginning, not knowing what I was doing, going over to Knoxville, sitting outside in October, and then going back, not having a clue as to why I was being driven back. But I'm, I'm telling you that my life has changed because of all of that. 
and all of this right here hugely changed in ways I can't even describe because a lot of them are still going on etherically. I don't know. You know what I mean? It's very. Well, you've had a lot of really potent observ <clears throat> observations come into your life. And, and these are observations that are such that they can't be unseen. And there's really not very many ways to put them together. Uh, and, and almost no ways to put them together and still hold on to your mainstream view of reality. Like, I, I still haven't, uh, you know, physically gone in and, and seen my TDA account or done, you know, any Amazon things. You know, I've seen all the videos and stuff, but, but I hear that, uh, that you've done that. So that's, that's a pretty potent observation that, uh, okay. Yeah, I've got. Um, why, why are these accounts here? Yeah, well, see, that's exactly correct. I have the. I have all my emails, I have all the print screens, I have everything to prove that I accessed my accounts. I paid three bills and they were paid and they were paid for longer than three or four days. Mm -hmm. And they all had to be <laughs> done manually. So there's there's so much more going on with all of this than, <clears throat> than any 3D business that somebody might want to look at in regards to this. There's just no, there's no two ways about it for me. There's no. And I don't know what, I don't know. It just feel I, like I said, it feels so, I, I personally feel so different as of this moment of right now. I don't even, I, I don't, I don't have the words for how different I feel right this minute. I mean, think about a time, a time, I don't know, back when you were getting a car loan or a house loan or something like that. And, and, and just the ideas that you had about our banking system and stuff then. And could, could you, could you ever find yourself going into a bank and, and like, Hmm, signing on another loan without having a, a, a serious introspection about where you are with the world and, and just, what, what's going on with our banks? Like that relationship has changed drastically in just a, a couple months, just for you. And, you know, I, I just wonder if that's going to have you doing more business with the bank or less business with the bank going forward. And I wonder how many people are truly following this case and have made similar observations of themselves and even ones that haven't made these observations, just watching all of this unfold. Uh, I wonder how much of an impact this is going to have uh, in the way they engage with the economy and the financial system going forward. Uh, well, <clears throat> I'm not quite sure what the next step is. I know what I have envisioned I'd like my life to be and and how I would like to see it set up and not not a one whit of it has anything to do <laughs> with with any of the systems that we have in place yeah so there's you know And I'm not sure how, what it's going to take to, to, um, I, but I do feel certain that some of, some of this feeling I have about this creational energetic, this whole idea that we are generating this, the, you know, event, 
the energetics to create I got a feeling anything that we wish to create the energetics are here now they're here now right right now that's the way it feels it's the way it's felt for the last mm, week for me as I'm not as in touch with my own guidance and my own hmm all the higher portions of me that I'd like to have on board running the show as smarmy still comes out on occasion to run the show I I'm not sure what it's gonna take for all of us there are some of us that are on some levels I think there are some creators who know who they are and they're ready to they're ready to go they're ready to go they're ready to step up and say okay let's go let's let's blow this pop stand let's just start creating all over the place because I'm telling you the energetic is here and I think that even some creators that don't know they're feeling it are feeling it maybe they're not sure or connected enough I know I haven't been, but I'm really working on getting that. That's the whole idea for me. Um, just speaking of another 3D observation that uh, I have no idea how this connects in, uh, but I know it connects in eventually because it's part of the, what the whole energy facet, free energy or whatnot. Um, mm -hmm. There, there's a new area of investigation or rabbit hole, whatever you want to call it, that's uh, popped up onto my horizons recently. And I'm just starting to dive into it now, but it, it feels like there's some really solid observations that are pointing towards it. Uh, and I think the search terms right now are the, the jet fuel hoax. Oh, I haven't heard anything about it. Uh, there's some... Um, there's some bright people doing some interesting thought exercises out there. Um, and a lot of it has to, a lot of it's wrapped up with the, what is it? The MH370 or the Malaysia airlines that. Mm -hmm. Right. <clears throat> There's some test footage of jet engines for airplanes that uh, it appears that, a jet engine is is a type of perpetual motion machine it's an air compressor and that as the central turbine spins on an axis um the the different fans fan blades inside compress the air at different levels and uh it it creates a self-sustaining loop that goes through you start these jet engines with uh, with air compressors and air hoses. And this one particular example I saw of a test firing of a jet engine uh, had some flames coming out the back, but then they disconnected a particular hose or something and no flames were coming out the back, but the thing was continuing to, to go and go and go. Um, I don't know how much stock to put in into, into those observations. <clears throat> the real mind-blowing one was talking about the Airbus construction and looking at the blueprints and looking at the claims of just how much fuel they say this Airbus can carry. And when they equate out just how many gallons it is and how much that weighs and where they say the gas tanks are already, it, it doesn't, it doesn't fit with engineering and stress and steel and shear parts. They're reporting that these gas tanks are in the wings of the airplane and the, the amount of gallons that these gas tanks apparently hold, uh, are, we're talking hundreds of thousands of gallons. And you can go look at stress testing of the wings and watch them just torquing these wings and letting them go, you know, just bending them all back and forth. 
there's no way that if these wings were filled with as much liquid as they're talking about, uh, that they could do that. You couldn't even get these wings, you know, which are connected here at the body of the plane and fully unsupported for their entire span. So that I guess they call that cantilevered. There's right. no way that you could support all that weight without something supporting it underneath. I mean, we're talking about what three twenty-five thousand gallon swimming pools, like what four feet deep and a twenty-four foot circle around in-ground swimming pool. Three of those are held in each wing, no, is what they're saying. Uh, yeah, so. Yeah. So there, there's some interesting videos that are popping up. I really love to be on this part of uh, experience where you're watching a new rabbit hole topic blossom out. <clears throat> um, there hasn't been a whole lot of engagement from the system that be. This is about the time when, when I first... Uh, learned of the whole flat earth rabbit hole, there were probably, a, you know, the discussion was about this far along as it is in the jet fuel hooks when I got into the flat earth uh, topic. And I just watched how that all blew up and mushroomed and ebbed and flowed as, as the different uh, what thought corral or, or controlled opposition uh, channels were getting in place. And so this will just be interesting. There's already observations that fly in the face of the official story we've been told. It, there's just no way possible for the, the Airbus uh, to hold as much fuel, liquid fuel, as they tell us. And, you know, the, the questions just go from there. What, what's keeping these planes up? And then if, if these jet engines can basically run indefinitely, <clears throat> Uh, you know, I, I just, I just wonder where, where is that Malaysia Airlines? Did a whole bunch of people escape and get outside of the veil, the, the little circular subset carved on this flat plane that we've collectively agreed is a spinning ball of rock in space? Like, I, I don't know what's going on, but that was just another interesting tidbit that came across my radar that I'm going to be digging into a little bit more. Yeah, that that one's that sounds like a good one to sink your teeth into. Yeah. Yeah, cuz you know, for what what is it? Free energy, just another lie. What what what's going on there? Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah, you'll have to keep me up to date on that one. Cuz I didn't even know that was um a thing. Yeah, well, I don't know. It would be nice to uh if you find anything new on it, you can send okay. it my way cuz yeah. there really not much stuff to find on it right now mm. so this is this is really the best time to for all those people who who want to see how the system is eventually going to respond when you know grassroots folks start spitting out some real truth uh, this would be a great time to watch it unfold in real time right, right. well <clears throat> yes and and look for the the metaphors and the because I I'm finding almost everything like that. Um, what I've been doing lately is seeing the how some of that is metaphor for what's really taking place in um, in a different level of our shared collective co create co-creative reality my focus and attention right this moment is here with you um but i have a feeling that i'm capable of doing loads more i think we all are and i think we are doing loads more all the time as creators this is not the only realm we play in all at once i have a feeling and so some of those things that take place that we can't point at at all, I think that might be why. <laughs> so that was, yeah, I kind of remember that. I'm not real sure. I think that happened. I've been having a lot of those 
kind of experiences that they're almost like bleed over. Like if I'm having an experience over here in this realm, did I communicate? Did I send, was that text? Was that telepathy? Was that what it, what? Did I email? There's some of that feeling going on too. So some of that different stuff, I, I just, that's what I'm saying. That, this, that MH, that, that whole thing with that plane, I don't know. I got no clue as to what happened with that. Is it still even, it may, it might still be here somewhere. <laughs> yeah. Who, who knows? Yeah. I, I mean, they, they've never found it. Yeah, no, exactly. I'm very interested in this other thing. I'll have to, I haven't heard it. You, you're the first I've heard of, of about this thing with the Airbus. I hadn't heard that at all. Oh yeah. The, the jet fuel hoax. Yeah. yeah. No, I hadn't heard that at all. Yeah. Well, let, let your, just let your own, your own self guide your search. And, and if you, if you find some mind blowing things along that, uh, I'd certainly take a look at them. Okay. All right. Yeah. Wow. We, I can't believe we've been talking almost two hours. It always happens that way. Doesn't it? Whenever we get together. Yeah. Well, there's plenty of things to talk about. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Well, it's been a lot of fun. Yeah. Always is. Thank you so much for coming. Oh, thanks for having me. Well, I will always put a link to your channel here and there will always be information in here about how to, how to contact me. If you, if anyone feels up to it, of course, you know where, where I'll be in this moment or that moment, whenever, I'm not sure <laughs> right now with all this dreaminess going on, I just don't know. Yeah. So, all right. Bye-bye. You rock.